Hey everyone, I know you guys want to see some real life coding examples of cool things in React that you might only see in tutorials. And in this video, I'm going to show you a very basic use case for the set interval hook that I happened to stumble upon while working on my startup. Now, this is an extremely simple case, uh, simple case, and a lot of the times the set interval hook is used for pretty complex things, which is why it might be hard for a lot of people to grasp or get a good easy example of it. But in this example, I just have a very, very, very basic basic page on my website and on that page I have a trending analytics thing which you can see here on the right side. On this trending analytics, it sort of swaps between the player of the week and the team of the week. And right now, the team of the week image is smaller than the player of the week one, so it sort of collapses on itself. We're working on making those the same size, but just for now, I wanted to work on the functionality. And as you can see, it just swaps between player of the week and team of the week. One thing we wanted to do was make it so that if someone was just sitting on the home page, you know, maybe watching the schedule, waiting for some matches to start, this would sort of alternate between itself just to show people People that there are more options um, than just whatever the default was. So for that, it was sort of perfect for player, uh, um, sorry, for the set interval hook. Now, the state of which one of these is currently being shown is just simply a state variable. And I set it up so that if the state variable is equal to player of the week or POTW uh, for short, it will show the player of the week. And if it's set to team of the week, it'll simply just show the team of the week. So what I did essentially, and I'll get rid of these console log statements real quick, just to make it a bit simpler for you to see before I add them back in, um, is I just created a use effect. And within that use effect, I created an interval using the set interval hook. In that set interval hook, the logic is extremely simple. All I'm doing is saying, if the current trend is player of the week, then change it to team of the week. And if the current player is, uh, sorry, if the current trend is anything else, because we only have two for now, um, set it to player of the week. And I'm not too worried about this being sort of an if structure because at most we might have five different states and you know, five if statements isn't the worst thing in the world to manage. So, um, it's a very finite problem uh, to have, so it's not too big of an issue, but that's essentially the logic. Afterwards, I set it to around 15,000 milliseconds, which is just equal to around 15 seconds, which means every 15 seconds, this is just going to change from whatever it is to the other state. And right now, uh, if I want to debug and show you guys, I'm going to add some console log statements and also change this to around three seconds of interval, which is 3000 milliseconds. So I've added a console log statement number one to see when the set interval is being run. And then I added a console log within the uh, both if structures to see which one is being called when. So if we go ahead, refresh the page and open our console up, we can go ahead and monitor uh, what is going on. So we can see here, it just got run and it set it to player of the week. It's going to get run again and set it to team of the week. Now it's going to get run again and sent to player of the week and so on. Obviously this three second interval is just to test and show you guys. I will have it at 15 seconds, but another cool feature of this, if you look at the rest of the use effect, we can see that we number one have a return statement in the use effect. And what this will do is this will run whenever the component is unmounting, uh, AKA when you go to a different page and the component is no longer being rendered, it's sort of like a cleanup function that uh, ties up any loose ends the component might have. And one of those is clearing out the interval so it doesn't continue continue to run in the background of the page while you are no longer rendering the component. Uh, so that is what this clear interval function does. And almost any time you use set interval, you're going to want to have a clear interval somewhere in there, depending on what your use case is. And the next thing is I am passing in the selected trend here as a um, as an actual uh, parameter um, into the use effect to make it so that whenever I actually go ahead and change that, it sort of restarts this interval. And the reason for that is if I'm a user and I go ahead and click on one of these uh, things, let's say I might click on it right as it's about to change. If I click on the next tab and then it instantly changes back, it's sort of a bad user experience. But you'll see if I were to manually click on this, it sort of restarts the timer. So you can see here in the console, it's not actually changing from the console itself because I'm manually changing it. So it restarts that three second timer so that it 
there's no chance of me clicking and then it instantly click, uh, changing back automatically, which is sort of like a weird user experience. But that's pretty much it. I just want to give you guys a very brief overview. And if you like coding examples from real world applications, even if they're as simple as this, make sure you subscribe and hit that notifications bell. I'm going to make sure I try to post more and answer every comment on this uh, video. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm and I'll see you guys in the next video.